Hi, I'm Adam from Fun, and today we will be looking at Lobster Bowl Semifinals Match 1-1, where teams 2145X Pink Shimmer Unicorns and 99125Z Boston Rubicon play against teams 58676R Corsairs R and 4886S String Theory. In this match, there are tons of exciting D scores and amazing coordination, as well as a shocking comeback from a seemingly unwinnable position. See if you can spot how the winning alliance was able to pull it off, and how the other alliance could have played differently to keep their lead and win the match. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many Vex alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash Vex to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun-themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Jumping into this match on the Red Alliance, we have Unicorn starting on their left side autonomous and Rui Guan starting on the right. And on the blue lines, we have Corsair starting on the left and String Theory starting on the right. So going into the autonomous period, we're going to see amazing autos out of all four of these teams. Unicorns is going to start by scoring four balls on this top uh, center goal, and then they're going to have a bit of a collision with uh, String Theory, which is going to throw off their auto and cause them not to score anything on that uh, far long goal. And then we're going to see Corsairs getting a score on this top center goal. So unfortunately, they're going to score one red ball along with their three blue, uh, which is going to cause this goal to end up uh, completely neutral. So there's going to be no control bonus. Uh, but this auto was very smart because they have a late score on that center goal, which should allow them to get control because they're going to push out any of their opponent's balls, uh, which is going to give them the advantage over a team that would go for that very early on. Uh, but unfortunately, because they accidentally scored a wrong color ball, uh, that counteracted their advantage. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to see uh, String Theory getting control for the blue alliance of this far long goal, and Rui Guan getting control of the close long goal. Uh, for the red alliance overall it's going to be a re a blue autonomous sorry uh, which is going to give them the advantage going into the match so at the start because there were so many balls scored it took the refs quite a while to score the match and the red alliance i can tell took advantage of that to carefully plan out their strategy for the beginning of the match so you notice that string theory is located on this far side of the field relative to Rui Guan, and then corsair is positioned on a pretty much full goal with no balls in their intake which means that they know that their first play is most likely going to be to leave this center goal and so the red alliance is going to take advantage of that by having unicorns first play be going for a d score on the center goal to push the blue, uh, blue balls that are far from them out of the goal and the red ones uh, are going to stay in the goal and that's going to give them that control bonus and then Rui Guan is going to go for a D score on this goal right here, which is going to allow them to push all of these red balls that are close to them uh, further into the goal and push the blue ones out to give them control over that. So we can go ahead and watch both of those D scores happen right here. And so it's going to start with the Unicorns one closely followed by the Rui Guan one. And then we notice that Corsairs is going to be playing very defensively on Unicorns. And this is to allow String Theory to get a nice score here, which we can see is going to give them uh, the large majority of the control on that far goal. So then coming up here, if I pause right here, at a minute 23, we're seeing Rui Guan uh, clearly communicated to Unicorns that they want to make a coordinated play here. So they're going to have Unicorns go for a push here to push uh, String Theory off of this goal. And that's going to allow this, because String Theory is currently defending this goal and they have a lot of control here, Rui Guan notices that it's very important that they're able to take at least some degree of control over this goal. So they're going to make this play where Unicorns is going to push String Theory away and then Rui Guan is going to be able to make a big score right here. So we can go ahead and watch that happen. And so we'll see that uh, Unicorns pushes Strength Theory and then Rui Guan's able to score it and then get a huge D score off. So then we're going to come right over here to a minute and 14 and we're going to see that Rui Guan has their wing out and they're clearly positioned to go for a D score. So unfortunately uh, Corsairs here should play very defensively here and try to protect their goal. Uh, but they're actually going to allow Rui Guan to get this score off, which is going to help them to get an even further lead right here. So we'll see Rui Guan's going to go for a score, or a D score. And then 
uh, Corsairs doesn't really respond and they just go for another score despite Ruigwan being in position to just de-score it immediately. And so that's going to be a little bit detrimental for uh, the blue alliance right there. So I'm going to jump back here. And so right here we can see that the red alliance is looking for opportunities that they're given. So uh, Ruigwan here notices that this bottom center goal is completely open. Uh, which is going to allow them to easily take control over that bottom center goal. And then y Unicorns notices that uh, String Theory is positioned right here, and they have uh, tons of balls in their intake right now, which means they're in a pretty good position to try and line up on this goal and get a pretty good score. So we're going to go ahead and watch that happen, and that's going to go pretty well. Uni or Ruguan's going to get good control over that bottom center goal. And then Unicorn's going to be able to fill up that uh, far long goal completely, which is going to give them the ability to make some D scores as well, which is going to help out uh, String Theory or the Red Alliance a lot. And String Theory in that position should have stayed on that center or on that far long goal rather to try and hold on to that. And then they're going to score some more and just get D scored once again. So String Theory really needed to be playing more defensively here to try and protect their points. And now we're going to see at the bottom here, uh, there's a little bit of a fight uh, on this uh, close long goal as well. And Ruiguan's going to make that D score as well uh, without, um, without any defense. So I'm going to go ahead and jump here to 16 seconds in the match. And we can notice right here, Red is in amazing positioning. The Blue Alliance was not playing as defensively as they should have been, which allowed a lot of D scores to happen for the Red Alliance, which means we see only one ball scored total on the field uh, for the Blue Alliance. So they pretty much only have auto and that one ball. Meanwhile, the Red Alliance has control over all four goals or all four control zones, and they have obviously a lot more balls scored. So in this position, the Red Alliance is up by more than 60 points. And there's only 16 seconds left on the timer, as you can see. So in this position, the Red Alliance should really be going for just playing defensively. You can see they're positioned very close to the Blue Alliance robots. We can see they're like paired up right here. So is what the Red Alliance should do is really just play defensively here because they're up in the match. There's not a whole lot of time left. They don't need to be scoring more in this position. They just need to play defensively, especially in such a high stakes match. They really just need to be playing defensively and maintaining their lead and just trying to hold what they have. Um, but they're going to try to get a little bit greedy and go for some more points. And this is going to allow the blue alliance here to get a score right there and then de-score on the center goal right here. And then uh, string theory at the top is going to go for a score. And also here at the bottom uh, long goal, Corsairs gets a score and a de-score. And so right there, just in those last 15 seconds, we go from, uh, sorry, right here, we go from the Red Alliance being up by more than 60 points to the end of the match where the Blue Alliance is actually up on points and they win the match. So the Blue Alliance was able to swing this match by 65 points in less than 15 seconds. And this was just due to the Red Alliance being a little bit greedy and trying to get uh, more points and not playing defensively and trying to hold the ground that they have. So. The Red Alliance should have noticed how up they were and really just tried to do anything they can. Just push the Blue Alliance robots around, defend their goals, anything they have to do to just maintain those points. And they ended up just not doing that. And the Blue Alliance was able to capitalize off of that and just get some scores and D scores off that just completely turned the match. 65 points in less than 15 seconds. So this was a really interesting match and there's a lot to learn from it. Uh, just lots of times where... Uh, teams just weren't defending the points that they had which allowed tons of swings to happen and the biggest swing was right at the end there where the blue alliance was able to come back from what seems almost unwinnable to just completely turning the match back into their favor which allowed them to go on and win the entire tournament. That comeback from the blue alliance was insane. The red alliance needed to stay vigilant and play defensively to hold their ground and maintain their lead. Let us know how you think these teams could have played this match differently. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Fun to keep up with all of our content. I'm Adam and thank you for watching this episode of Fun Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos.
Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.